Hello Pirates, welcome to another deep dive video. This time we'll talk about the Piranha, the new tier 9 defender that was released this July on Bounty. I've built one, I've been using it, so far I'm satisfied with it, but this is not a simple ship to build. It's not a simple ship to place in your base. There are many things that can go wrong, so let's understand how it works, share the knowledge, and please leave your comments, leave your experience with the Parangian in the comments in this video. So if we need to do any follow-ups, I'll take that feedback into account. Again, this is a deep dive video. It's not just a here's the build video. Uh, the idea is to understand the ship, the components, what it does, how it works. And it's for players who are interested in having a better base defense. If you just want the video, uh, it's in the last slide, it's probably the last minute or two of the video, and you can copy the code from the video description. So here's the Paroya. It's an interesting ship because it's not a damage dealer, but it's very tanky. It has 150 million armor. To compare, the, the strongest defender is the Hellswarm and has 85 million. This one has 150. Very high overall deflections, 100,000 deflections against all damage types, and a splash damage reduction that gives it about 50% extra survival against splash damage. Unlike every other defender in tier 9, this one has speed. The only other recent defender with combat speed was the Carnage, but the Carnage was a bit of a dud. This one I think it has potential, but it also will chase the attackers and you cannot control it. It's just going to go around. You can read it here. You know, it pursues its foes relentlessly and it uses the permafrost cannon to slow the enemies. Here's the permafrost on the right. It's not a damage dealer either. It's there to do this 25% or 0.25 slow. It's not saying here but Kickside mentioned it, the slow effect lasts 4 seconds. But of course, people have slow resistance, so it's going to in practice last a lot less. An empty Piranha takes 3 days, 21 hours for me to build. That is contingent on your R&D level, having officers. So maybe for you it's going to be more like 4 days and a half if you don't have officers and upgrades all done. It has one weapon slot, three armor slots, five special slots. One more than the usual defender. And that's probably for you to put a, an engine, a combat speed special. Very important to the Piranha is the Forge Fire Thrower. Uh, you have to put a Forge Fire Thrower in there because it's only one weapon slot. And again, it doesn't do damage. 5,000 damage is nothing. The reload though, it's maxed out. It's 0.2 seconds. You can see it here. And do not waste any specials on radioactive or Troy reload because no weapons in this game can reload faster than 0.2 seconds. So it's already as fast as any weapon can fire in the game. The key property of this thrower is that it reduces, it shreds deflection from the enemies every time it fires. So you see here on the right, uh, the stacks will last longer than a battle, more than five minutes. So actually, it, once it hits, that debuff will, will last for the whole battle. Every hit takes some deflection out. It depends on the ta type. Like Ballistic takes 600, Corrosive takes 150. And it's balanced based on what people have on their defense is dealing damage. So that's why it takes more ballistic, less corrosive, and so on. If the, par the Paranya ever has a chance to fire Destroyer 500 times, it's going to hit the maximum that you see in here. It takes 500 shots to get to the maximum debuff you see listed. Uh, and just to give an idea, because of the 0.2 second reload, 500 shots will be fired in 100 seconds, aka a minute and 40 seconds. So if the Paranya keeps firing at you, you're the, the attacker, and the Paranya keeps firing at you for a minute and a half, approximately, 
you will have lost all of that deflection. And according to Kixai Braden, who's the lead PvP designer who created this ship, he told me the deflection can actually go negative. So if you only have 50,000, let's say, explosive deflection, and it hits the max, which is 112, you're going to be negative 62,000 deflection. Meaning, fire from a turret that, let's say, will do 100k damage to you, if you're negative 62,000, it's going to do 100 plus 62,000, it's going to do 162,000. So it's, it's like bonus damage that the base will be doing at the attacker. So the one thing you don't want to do, you probably don't want to sit still while the Paronia fires at you 500 times. As the attacker, you either want, you either want to kill it quick or you want to just ignore it and go for the main prize, attack the base and get the, the, the key buildings before it shreds too much. So anyways, again, just recapping so far, what can you expect from the parade? It's going to chase the attackers. You cannot control, you cannot drive, you cannot make it stop. It's going, to, if, even if you set a patrol range in your base, it's going to ignore that patrol range and it's going to move all over the base chasing the attacker. Once it once it reaches the attacker, it's going to fire at the closest ship. So that's something the attackers can exploit. If you have your five ships attacking a base, you can put one of them ahead, closer to the pariah. And so only that one ship gets debuffed, while the other four will also be firing to kill it quicker. So you have four ships unaffected by the debuffs, and one of them will be severely debuffed. So you can still attack the base with that. The worst thing you can do as an attacker is stack the five ships, stop, and kill the Paranya, because then it's going to be debuffing all five ships at once. Uh, at the same time, that cannon will be slowing down your ship. So again, if your ships are attacking stacked and the Paranya is firing at you, you you're only going to see the fire from the thrower. It's hard to see the cannon, but the cannon will be firing too and will be causing the slow effect. All right, so overall, as the longer the Paranya fires, the stronger everything in your base gets because the attacker now has less deflections left. For people who have a hard time understanding the shredding, the deflection debuff, here's how it works. And, and this is these screenshots are from a real attack. So imagine I had this one Paronia coming here and firing at this trencher for 40 seconds. That's exactly what it happened. It approached at the 47 second mark in the battle at 52 second mark started firing at this one trencher. The attacker was marked enough that you can see here, while my Paroni is fire here almost dead, firing at that one trencher, his other ships are out of the picture here on the right, killing my Paroni. So, and, and they succeeded. They killed it at the one minute, 30 second mark. So it was 40 seconds firing and every 0 0.2 seconds, so it fired 200 times. Okay, so if I look at the debuff from each shot and I multiply by 200, this is what happened. It actually, this stranger lost 120 ballistic deflection out of the 255, and this is an assumption. I'm assuming it had the ballistic C9 plate, so if it did, out of that 255, it lost 120,000. The explosive out of the 85, it lost 45, so now it has only 40. Now here's where it gets interesting. It's the concussive deflection, because out of the 25,000 concussive deflection, it lost 60,000, so now it's negative 35,000 concussive deflection. So any concussive fire, my base would be firing at him, which is probably nothing because my base doesn't do concussive, would have an extra damage of 35,000 that he'd be taking. And by the way, these numbers are the standard trencher deflection when it's moving, because when it stops, it actually gets some extra buffs, right? But these numbers are all affected by the shred. 
Okay, if it was a hell swarm or a warhound, you gotta look at those deflections and kind of imagine how much of that is going away. So of course, what happened in the rest of the attack is that trencher, once the five ships went down the channel, that trencher died faster than the others. The other effect I kind of already explained, so the Peronia will slow down the attackers. Now, here's how you can make yours better, okay? Uh, it's going to slow down the attackers by 25% for up to four seconds. That's The four seconds is not written down here, but it's being shared on Discord and confirmed by Braden. And I think it's posted on the bounty uh, brief thread as well. But the thing is, most Conquerors have about 80% slow resistance. If they're using the ECM special, that's what they have. So when you say this lasts 4 seconds minus the 85 resistance, it's only lasting 0.8 seconds. After that, they go back to the normal speed, right? And it's a splash-based effect. So if, all, again, all Conquerors are stacked, it's going to slow them all down by 25% for 0.8 seconds. The cannon reloads only every, every 8. Once you rank, every 2 seconds. So that means it reloads every 2 seconds, the effect will last 0.8, and for 1.2 seconds until it fires again, it's not being slowed, slowed, slowed down at all. The way you can work that is if you can work up the reload on the cannon, and there are special combinations that can add up to 176% that I found, so then when you do the math, you get the two seconds of a fully ranked Paranya and you divide by the base reload one plus the 176 bonus. So two divided by 2.76, it's going to reload every 0.72 seconds. If you get this, even at 80% slow resistance, you're, you're going to be able to keep the 25% combat speed debuff going on all the time. So here's an idea. More than building the Paranya, part of the brain teaser is where you're going to place it in your base. So it's all about the location and where you place it affects how you build it. So there is such a thing as a wrong build for that location. All right. So plan where you're going to put it first and then decide on the build. Because if you place it outside of your gates, it can be baited. Right, so the, the attacker can make it go all around the base, and while it's going around the base, they can go down your channel, and the Paranya never fires a shot. I was just attacked 30 minutes ago by a guy who did just that. Baited the Paranya out, because mine's outside the gate, and it, it never fired a shot. Okay, so that's one, one way. Uh, if you're going to put it there, of course, combat speed becomes very important because you want it to catch the attacker. If you place it behind the first gate, that, that's usually kind of still kind of outside in the channel. And you got to be careful you don't place it in a point where it's blocked by the gate so it doesn't chase the attacker. And then the attacker uses Hellswarm UAVs on your Piranha and uses that to chain into the base. So it can actually work against the defender. For the attackers, keep an eye for that. If you see a Piranha badly positioned, uh, kind of outside that you can reach without going in, you could probably UAV the base to death. Uh, but it's harder to bait out because it's only going to charge once the first gate is dead. And then you could place it inside the base. Uh, it's initially my least favorite place. Because that means by the point the attacker gets there and kills all three gates in your base, it's pro they're probably in. It's too late for the Piranha to weaken the fleet because they're past your turrets. Your turrets are probably dead. And I'm saying probably, probably because the hull is just one day old. So maybe somebody's going to figure out a way where it makes sense to be inside the base and be very effective. I, I haven't. Right? If you do, let me know. So let's talk about the build before we get on the build. Very important thing to understand. The permafrost cannon has a range of 45. The forge fire thrower has a range of 45. And you do not control the ship. So it's going to chase the attackers. And when a ship is on autopilot, it stops at its maximum range. 
right? So the ranges should overlap like this. And then both weapons will fire. You're good. At this point, the ship on autopilot will chase. And if they reach an attacker, they'll stop at about 42. I don't know if you know that. But ships on auto, they always stop at 95% of their range. So range 45, it's going to stop 43 points away from the attacker. And both weapons will fire. So you're good. If you mess up with the range, then you're going to have a problem because one weapon will fire and the other will not. For example, these are the ballistic specials you can put on your ship. Avoid any one of these specials that, that increases the cannon range or even decreases the cannon range. You don't want them. So stuff like uh, ballistic force, ballistic scope, uh, nuclear accelerators 1 and 2, these other specials here, I don't remember all the names, but all these guys who add 50% cannon range, you don't want them, any of them. Don't use them, okay? Because if you do, this is what's going to happen. The cannon will have a longer range. The thrower will have a shorter range. The ship will stop automatically at cannon's range, and the thrower will never fire unless the attacker drives towards your ship. Okay, so it's bad. Specials you can use are drum reloaders, uh, punch drive system, ballistic calibrator, which I like. Uh, Auto loader 3 is not here because it's on the research tab. Uh, CMCR reloader, like you can use these guys. I would not use any of these specials giving building damage or just ballistic reload here. These guys, I think it's a waste. And remember, invasion scanner does not work in defense, only when you're attacking, so don't put that in. Um, so yeah, I think my favorite, actually I would, I should have painted the punch drive as green as well, but these three, punch drive, ballistic calibrator, auto loader are my three favorites. Same goes for the thrower. Do not use any specials that increase or modify the thrower range in any way, shape or form. Also, because it's already at, at the fastest possible reload in the game, don't use any specials that give reload. And because it doesn't shock wave, you don't need anything to do supercharge. So, you know, avoid um, things like this guy that adds 13% thrower range, bad. Radioactive force, radioactive scope, bad. Invasion scanner is bad because it doesn't work on defense, as I said before. Um, this auto loader, because it gives uh, uh, radioactive reload you don't need, and it doesn't give much ballistic reload, so you're going to be much better off with auto loader 3 than 4. Don't use auto loader 4. Um, same with the CMCR reloader. It gives cannon reload, not much, but it gives radioactive reload, which you don't need. All these specials give supercharge and or reload, and you don't need any of that. All right? The good guys are the guys giving you extra damage, if anything, uh, or giving you extra splash. Because this is a splash-based weapon and you want it to affect as many ships as possible. So even if they're not perfectly stacked but they're close, the extra splash will help. Right. So if you use anything that changes the range, again, you're going to have this situation. Thrower fires, but the cannon doesn't fire. That's bad. Things you can use. Atomic targeting, not my favorite, but yeah, you could use it. Gives a bit a bit of damage. Fission fuel, no, the same. My two favorites are viscosity regulator and radioactive ignition. These two, because they give you not only some damage, which is not the purpose of the weapon, but most importantly, they give you splash and spread. Alternatively, you can just use something that gives you splash and spread, like Explosive System 4, Combustion System 2, something like that. Consider where you're going to put your Paroya before you consider the build. If it's going to be outside chasing the attackers, you need speed, because most attackers will need to be caught. And a trencher usually runs at 70 to 74 speed, on average. Warhounds, I've seen 58 to 66, Hellswarms, 28 to 32. Those are, of course, easy to catch. But I would say your speed should be at least 60, 62 if you plan on catching up with these guys. What can you use? You can use the reverse count engine on its own, give 62 speed already, but it's going to cut your range in half 
from 45 down to half of that. It also cuts the accuracy of the cannon, which is not a big deal. Onslaught engine will give you 50. And careful if you put a sync drive, unless you do that on purpose, because if you put a sync drive and there are other defenders in the fleet with zero combat speed, the sync drive will force the Peronia to zero speed because it matches the slowest on the fleet. So you can actually use that in your favor if you want to put it deep in the channel and you don't want it to move at all, put a sync drive on. Uh, you can combine those engines with other sources of speed, like D5 EV armor, it also gives evade. Hyper 30, it also gives evade and projectile speed. And the punch drive special, that one gives ballistic reload, ballistic damage and speed. It's, it's a good special to use. So, for instance, this setup has 3 D5 EV, onslaught engine and hyper 30, and it makes 62 combat speed. It's not bad. This guy with a scout engine, I think it gets to 72, 74. So it's good to keep up with rangers if you need that. But you're going to sacrifice half of your range. Remember that. All right. So having said that, it's a lot to absorb. Uh, what's the best Peronia build? And the answer is there isn't one. Because again, it depends on the location of the ship and the ship is only one day old. It's a bit premature to say there's one killer build. Um, you know, do you want it to chase? Is it going to be behind gates? Is it going to be roaming? Uh, which fleet is your main problem today? Are trenchers getting you more often or are hell swarms getting you more often? Because then if you don't change your base and your main problem is trenchers, you probably want a fast Peronia. If your main problem are hell swarms, you don't need to worry about speed as much. Just remember the key thing for a build that's right, it's do not mess up with the ranges. To get you started, here's a build. And I'm not saying, it's, again, it's not the best build and it's not the right build for any placement and it's not the right build for any base, but it's a decent one. Uh, the Forge Fire Thrower, of course. Two Evade Armors. You could go three if you wanted, but I put one... Uh, explosive deflection because two of the three most common conquerors, the Hell Swarm and the Warhounds, will do explosive damage. So it's going to make your Peronia last a little bit longer. It has the Onslaught engine and Hyper 30 for speed and evade. Has good evade, which helps against trenchers. Trenchers have a very hard time killing the Peronia, so their best hope is to outrun the Peronia and ignore it. Attackers using trenchers are probably doing that. That's what I've seen. Um, it has punch drive for more speed and auto loader. So that combo gives the cannon, the permafrost cannon, good reload. Actually, the best reload I could find. Some extra damage and it gives more speed to the, ship, to the fleet. So you see this one is at 64 speed. Enough to catch up with most attackers, not with rangers. And then I put the radioactive ignition here for some negative spread, more splash. The damage doesn't matter because the thrower will never do much hurting people, hurting fleets, actually. So again, I'm using radioactive ignition. Consider combustion system. Consider desolation warheads, if it's compatible. Consider uh, explosive system. Those guys, splash and spread, you know. The code for this build is in the video description if you want. And that's it, Pirates. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, hit the, the little bell to be notified. And this video here shows the fleet in the Peronian action. See you next time.